Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to take the next 30 minutes and talk to you about um, the Building Healthy Communities, Engaging Middle Schools Through Project Healthy Schools Funding Opportunity. So again, thank you, and for the next 30 minutes, we're going to give you some information about this unique funding opportunity we have for you. So this funding opportunity is part of the Building Healthy Communities Collaborative, which is a statewide collaborative um, set out to address obesity, um, specifically childhood obesity in the state of Michigan. And the three partners bringing this funding opportunity are Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and Project Healthy Schools at the University of Michigan. My name is Christopher Hernandez, and I will be joined today by Maggie Meyer. And also in the background, um, to answer any of your questions, is going to be Janice Stewart. We're all, all wellness coordinators here at Project Healthy Schools. So a, a little bit of information for you if you've never used Blue Jeans before. Um, this is what you might be seeing if you're joining us through a desktop computer. Um, so on the right hand side, you'll have some common commands. The first one that would be important for you is the chat function. That's going to be an all chat feature through that chat bubble. The next one below that is with the little person in the chat bubble. That's how you're going to talk to us as um, moderators directly. So if you want to send a direct message to us, you're going to press that button. And we're going to be taking questions to answer at the end of this presentation. So if you want to send those on over to us, you can click the Q&A icon at the bottom and we'll collect those and we'll answer them as best as possible at the end of this presentation. And then if you're joining us from a cell phone, your interface might look something like this. Um, most importantly is that chat function right at the top right. Um, that is where you're going to get both the all chat function and the moderator chat uh, for this webinar. So let us begin. Uh, here's what we're going to cover today um, during this 30 minutes. We're going to tell you a little bit what project, about what Project Healthy Schools is, um, some eligibility to apply for this funding opportunity, an overview of the program steps for Project Healthy Schools, some of the resources that we do provide to participating schools, some expectations that we have of the schools in our program, and then we're going to go um, over how you can apply for this funding opportunity, um, some selection criteria, and some key dates to look out for. So sadly, this is what we see commonly um, among our youth. Uh, you know, increased screen time um, and poor uh, dietary choices, um, whether that's through snacks or uh, meals. Uh, this is sadly has driven an increase in overweight or obesity in our young people. And, and one in three children in Michigan are overweight or obese. So there's definitely a real need to address this problem. So that's where Project Healthy Schools come in. We are a community, a Michigan Medicine collaboration to improve the present and future health outcomes through education, environmental change, and community engagement. This mission drives our program goals, as you can see here in this slide. Um, it's really built, our program is built around five program goals that we want to instill in our schools and our students and staff. That is to eat more fruits and vegetables, to choose less sugary foods and beverages, eat less fast and fatty foods, be active every day, and spend less time in front of the screen. And some eligibility requirements are, this funding opportunity is available for all public, charter, or private nonprofit schools. It is available to your school regardless of your free and reduced price meal, school meal percentage. 
or your geographic location. If you're currently participating in another health program like Fuel Up to Play 60 or the Michigan Model for Health, you still are eligible to apply for this program and your school must serve the sixth grade to be eligible. Hi everybody, I'm Maggie Meyer and I'll be taking you through our five step process. We have all schools follow these five steps to ensure successful completion of the program each year. And you've got an on-site Project Healthy Schools Wellness Coordinator that will be assigned to each school to help guide and assist you through these five steps. Jumping right into step one, this is really where we start to build the foundation for a healthy school culture. Here we have schools identify one or more wellness champion. This champion can be a teacher, principal, counselor, or any other school staff member. The champion should have a willingness to lead, some knowledge of the resources available at the school, and just a general passion for health and wellness. This champion will be our main point of contact with the school and the coordinator assigned to your school will be doing regular site visits, phone calls, or emails just to keep up with this wellness champion. In this step, we also have schools form a wellness team. This is often a group of like-minded individuals that are driven to help the efforts of creating a healthier school culture. So wellness teams usually include a building administrator, food service representative, teachers, other school staff members, and sometimes we even get parents and students involved in this team. Step two is where we start to assess the school wellness culture. Here we are looking to identify some needs of your school in particular. And we start by having all the sixth grade students take a health behavior questionnaire. This gives us a baseline measurement on their self-reported behaviors. And we are looking at things like their daily intake of fruits and vegetables, their daily amounts of physical activity, involvement in sports, average screen time, um, just along with a few other measurements there for their self-reported behaviors. Then to address the needs of the entire school, we require schools to complete the Healthy School Action Tool. This is a tool through the state of Michigan, and it helps to measure how well the existing foundation supports school health. Next on to step three, this is kind of building off of that assessment that we have the schools do. This is where we analyze that assessment and make an action plan for the school. This is really a great opportunity where we can uniquely tailor our program to each individual school. To do so, we take a look at those results from the Healthy School Action Tool, and we work with our schools to identify at least three school wellness goals that will serve as the main focus points as we are improving wellness at your school. So step four, this is really where we get to put all of that planning into action. Each school begins with a kickoff event. This is to introduce students and staff members to the Project Healthy Schools program and the five goals. This is a great opportunity for schools to share news of their participation with parents and with their local media sources as well. After the kickoff, then the school is ready to start teaching our 10 Project Healthy Schools lessons. I will cover these more in our very next slide, but every school is provided with materials to teach our hands-on skill building lessons. After those lessons, or in conjunction with those throughout the school year, we have every school implement at least four school-wide wellness initiatives. Again, these initiatives will be addressing the needs of the school and the set goals. And some examples of those initiatives include like an apple crunch day or apple tasting as seen here in the picture. This is from Romulus Middle School. It could be physical activity breaks in the classroom, a staff wellness challenge, 
or even a health fair. These initiatives, they're an excellent time to engage the entire school community, whether that's through the staff wellness initiatives, as we've seen staff are huge role models for students when it comes to wellness. And it's nice to be able to do something for your staff as well, or things like your um, health fairs or family fitness nights. Those are a great way to engage the community and kind of spread that message outside of the regular school day. So next up, we've got a breakdown of our 10 lessons. All of our lessons relate back to our five goals that Chris mentioned earlier. So those are to be active every day, eat more fruits and vegetables, eat less sugary food and beverages, do less fast and fatty foods, and reduce screen time. So here you can see some examples of materials that we use in our lessons. And these lessons are intended to be taught by a teacher or a group of teachers at your school in a 45 to 50 minute time period. It's best if they can be integrated into a health class, a physical education class, or another core academic class. Your wellness coordinator will provide a training for those who will be teaching the Project Healthy Schools lessons and will also provide your school with these necessary materials. So as you see in that top picture in lesson three, my plate, my choice, students are using a paper plate and breaking up the plate into the different um, categories of my plate and they get to kind of analyze a meal that they've recently had. In the sixth lesson, the rainbow of color, students are actually physically building a salad during class. So the bottom picture shows a couple of the students shaking up their salad, making sure the dressing gets on there. And that's a really fun one that opens their eyes to how easy it is to prepare a salad and make your own dressing. And they often get to try something new during that class as well. So next, moving on to our very last step, step five. This is where we measure success of the program. So we have every school follow up with that post-program health behavior questionnaire. So again, we'll be asking the sixth grade students to complete this questionnaire. And it helps us to analyze the change in students' self-reported behavior. We have students and staff complete a post-program survey just to give some feedback on the lessons. And we have every school share photos and success stories. So we really like to hear what kind of success each school has had. It's different with every school. And here we just have an example of that. We've got a picture of a student trying their salad and a success story from the Assistant Director of Food Service in East Lansing at McDonald Middle School. So she said, after the salad lesson in December, we sold 72 salads in January, which was a 20% increase. And after the second salad lesson in March, their sales for that month jumped to 89, which is a 50% increase from their normal sales. So McDonald Middle School was a first year school with us during the 2016-17 school year, and they have been doing an awesome job. As seen here from that success story from Jillian Wenzel, the Assistant Director of Food Service. So, Next up, some resources. Your school will have um, a lot of help from your coordinator as you um, are going through the program. So you'll have that on-site consultation with your wellness coordinator. Like I mentioned before, they will do regular check-ins with you either through those site visits, phone calls, or emails, and they're going to be there to help you along the way with each step in that first year. By the end of that first year, the wellness champion should be able to kind of take it over, but your coordinator will still be in touch with you to help out. And then as far as our lessons, all of the necessary materials for the lessons will be provided. You can see in the picture here, this is from lesson four, Sugar Shock. We provide some laminated cards to look at the nutrition label, some cups and juice and sparkling water to help them create a healthy pop. And 
for our, our lessons. We have written lesson plans with step-by-step -step instructions for each lesson. Um, and you have ongoing access to all of our online materials each year. So if any updates are made, you're gonna be able to access those through our Project Healthy Schools portal. So all schools have access to our Project Healthy Schools portal, all of our participating schools. They have a login protected access to this portal. This is where our schools can log on and find those lesson plans for our 10 lessons and the materials needed. They have some guidance on the five steps, some additional ideas for wellness initiatives, and we have our up-to-date news and announcements. Lastly, on our resources, we do have some funding. We provide a wellness champion stipend. And we also provide schools with funding for their wellness initiatives. Um, that's with funding for their wellness team. And we have a certain amount allotted for PE equipment and tastings. So this funding overall for the wellness initiatives, it is flexible for each school as we are tailoring those initiatives to meet the needs of each school. Your wellness coordinator will help you and they'll help guide you in that budgeting and spending of these funds. And then lastly, for the Wellness Champion Network, we have our network of champions. We hold a an annual wellness champion gathering. So this is a great opportunity to connect with other wellness champions across the state who are implementing the program in their schools, just like you will be. And it's an opportunity to share ideas and earn continuing education credit hours. So like Maggie mentioned on the last slide, <clears throat> we've been able to build a vast network um, through this Project Healthy Schools program. So here's a map of where we currently implement our program. We are currently in 85 schools in Michigan, um, and we've served approximately 63,000 students uh, since this program started in 2004. Um, as you can see here uh, from the map on the right, the red stars are all the new, pro, the, all the new locations um, that we entered in the fall of 2017. And so again, it just speaks to um, the sustainability of this program. We've retained about 90% of the schools that have entered our program. Um, so schools have really benefited and kept these steps and ideas going in their schools. we have seen great program impact in student self behaviors as well. Um, like Maggie mentioned, those um, health behavior questionnaires, uh, this is where we gathered this data. So after program implementation, we did see increases in things like fruit consumption or participation in physical activity like school sports. And then we saw decreases in things like chocolate consumption or uh, screen time, as you can see there. So we did see impacts with our students and how they reported their behaviors after receiving this program. Now some expectations for our schools. It's crucial that we have an active wellness champion and administrative support during this program implementation. Um, there'll be regular meetings with your coordinator, so um, allowing, allotting that time for a wellness champion and some administrative time to meet with the coordinator and implement these five steps in the school. We're asking that schools complete the Healthy School Action Tool um, during their time in the program. We want them to teach the 10 educational lessons to all sixth graders at the school. We want schools to hold at least four wellness set of initiatives during the school year. So things like those um, physical activity events, those nutrition, staff wellness, things like that. We want at least a minimum of four of those to occur during the year. 
um, administration of those online program measurements like the health behavior questionnaire and the program surveys and to share photos and success stories with Project Healthy Schools. Now, some information on how to apply to the program. So the application is currently live, along with some frequently asked questions and other information about the program. And that is available at our website at www.projecthealthyschools.org forward slash BHC. And there's a couple of ways that you can complete the application. It is a downloadable, downloadable PDF on our website. Uh, you can fill that out electronically or fill it out by hand. If you fill it out electronically, you can send those to our main email, which is listed below. It is projecthealthyschools at umich.edu, or you can mail those handwritten completed applications to our physical address um, listed down below. Now, we want to give you some tips to completing um, to submitting a competitive application during this uh, funding opportunity. So we want, if you can show us a level of commitment from administration and staff to complete these five program steps, including the Healthy School Action Tools, and that really helps sustain the program over time. We want administrators to be engaged throughout the application process as well. They'll be vital to program implementation in the fall of this coming school year. It really is helpful if you can identify a core class where you can teach these 10 PHS lessons um, to all sixth grade students at your school. Identification of your wellness champion or champions, as well as a variety of other wellness team members will be crucial for completing things like wellness initiatives and the lessons and the assessments throughout the year. And the bottom one is just have a completed application. Make sure you fill out everything that is asked throughout the application. Now here's a timeline of the next coming weeks. Um, the application, like I said, is currently live on our main website. And the application deadline is March 30th of 2018. We will be conducting school interviews with those that submit an application in April and May of 2018. And then we will announce the recipients of this funding opportunity uh, June 1st of 2018. So again, we wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, to give you a little more information about this funding opportunity, uh, I know we've received a couple of questions during this time. And so we're gonna answer a couple of those. Um, but again, thank you for joining us. We are gonna be um, uploading this video to that application webpage of projecthealthyschools.org forward slash BHC. Um, for you to view later, as well as the questions that were answered and the PowerPoint presentation for you to view. Um, so let's see. One question was about when are you sharing? Oh, no. uh, we will be sharing it up. We anticipate that those will be up later this week in the next couple of days. Um, We'll have that recording up as well as the PowerPoint, but the application and the frequently asked questions are already up uh, for you to view. Um, another question that we got, uh, if you are selected, do we need to do anything to get ready for the program? Now, it's a really good question. There are a couple of things that you can do after the time of um, the time you are awarded. Uh, this funding opportunity and the start of the new school year. So we're going to be doing a um, half day on site orientation um, with the administrator and staff members that have been selected as the wellness champions. Um, and that needs to be completed by October 30th of 2018. It'd be helpful if you have and have formed a wellness team. So identifying those like minded individuals 
at your school, um, other staff, maybe some parents, administrators, um, community members, so forming a well-balanced wellness team before that date, and then completing a core assessment and two sub-assessments of the Healthy School Action Tool. Let's see. Do you have examples of people have paid for in the past with PHS funding besides the wellness champion? What people have paid for in the past? Um, I'm not sure. So, like the so one. So, I had a, a scary slurp smoothie tasting in Detroit today. This is Jana speaking. Um, so, we purchased some local Michigan cherries and did uh, cherry tasting in the cafeteria. That was for all the grades in the school to sample smoothies in their cafeteria. So, tastings are a great way um, to invest your money. Another area might be Again, that PE equipment, so purchasing equipment so that your PE and health classes can do some really great things. Um, but you also might uh, do some challenges that have some small prizes uh, to promote health among students or staff. You might um, do a health fair that brings in vendors like you know, chair massages or um, smoothie bikes or other things like that. So there can be little expenses kind of tied to the different events that you might throw, like 5Ks or field days. You'll often want to purchase cups for water or have snacks available. Um, so things like that. So your wellness champion will, uh, like we said, sort of decide what's the best way for you to spend your money, but it can pretty much be on just about anything that helps uh, meet your goals and promote health within your building. Thank you, Jana, for that. Um, is there any other questions? We'll be happy to take those if there are. So can you talk a little bit about the program being evidence-based? So previously we did conduct biometric screenings um, for the students that were in the program. Um, although that is currently uh, not a requirement anymore, that was something that was done early on in program implementation uh, when the program first started. And we really did see improvements in physiological measures um, like decreases in blood pressure and triglycerides, uh, LDL, and so, although those aren't required anymore for schools to complete, uh, that really set the foundation um, for the program and um, the evidence behind this program working in schools. Thank you for that question. So, if there's any other, we'll wait for those. Um, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. And uh, we'll stick around for another five to 10 minutes, we know. It's the end of the day um, if you're at school. Again, thank you for joining us. Do we have a rough estimate for stipend amounts? Those really fluctuate with how we are funded for the program. So this is a partnership funded program. And so as a nonprofit, our funding varies from year to year, um, but we've continued to be able to provide a stipend for our schools. So it's really hard to say a set amount, but we have continued since program implementation in 04, being able to provide schools and that wellness champion with a stipend to continue program implementation. Thank you for that. Any others? I have another one here. So how will we know if our school is selected or not? So schools will be informed uh, via an email message to the contact information, the primary contact person on the application. And so we'll be sending word out if you were chosen or not um, on June 1st of 2018. Again, thank you. Thank you for sending in those questions and joining us today. 
Um, if you do have any other questions for us that you think of later, feel, please, please feel free to contact us either by email or by phone. Uh, again, the email is projecthealthyschools at umich.edu or our main phone is air code 734-764-0290.